Hey there, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up Substance Painter files when the version has changed and also when uh, our textures are um, were created in a different format basically before I was using Painter uh, more exclusively. So this is what you might find if you open up, in this case, the Devil Head B texture uh, in a more in a newer version of Painter <coughs> excuse me, than the, uh, than the file was uh, originally made in. It's going to show up pink here, perhaps, and if that's the case, you just come down here, click that little button, and you're going to change this to this the PBR Metal Rough shader. I don't know why that doesn't happen automatically, but it doesn't, and at one point it did throw me for a loop, so now hopefully it won't throw you for a loop. So here's the, the head. You can tell it looks good. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it looks like in Unity, pretty much. Um, the problem is that you know we have the basic textures here. And if you look in the texture settings, we've got the normal map, world space normal, all these things. We even have the ID. Uh, and so what you can do uh, to modify this is um, create new layers and then work on those layers. So in this case, we're going to go to uh, a new layer. Let's say we want to change the color of these um, uh, uh, horn spaces. I'm just going to call this horn spots. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. One, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a blank layer. That's this right here, um, and I'm gonna call this nest that inside the folder and call this HSL. I'm gonna change this to pass through for the base color, uh, and then I'm gonna add a filter, and then again search for HSL and search there. Now I'm just gonna change the hue so we can see the result. Oh, and this has to be passed through as well. Um, so now we can see the result of the change there. Uh, next step, I can do a couple things. One, I can do add a mask with the color selection. So this app works if this is populated. It should be populated most of these. If it's not, then this won't work. Uh, and then you choose which color. You just pick color and choose that, and you got that. Then this is very similar to my old uh, editor um, extension that would allow customization because I used the color ID. Now, the problem is that this isn't exactly the most clean look there. So what I can do is one I could create it's a black mask and paint it myself. Um, if you prefer you can also uh, I believe let's see if this works and copy the mask then add a black mask and then paste into mask. Okay so now we've got black oh but still alright so that didn't work. So let's add a black mask and we're going to just paint it. Um, so with your brush you can go for the soft brush that's default or you can do the basic hard. If I'm going to be painting on the UV, then I generally will change this alignment to UV. That avoids some issues where sometimes it doesn't, uh, it will paint more than you expect. So I'm just going to make the basic outline for this up here. I'm going to do the same to this side. Um, I know I'm going to be painting more than that, so I don't have to be super accurate. Um, all right, and then we're going to change the brush type. Again, I don't know which one will be the best. I'm going to just scoot. Dirt's always great. Cotton tends to work pretty well. This dirt splash works pretty decently. So I'm going to start with this dirt splash. And these are just a preset settings. I'm going to go around this. Oops. Just kind of see what it looks like. There we go. So I'm going to bring it a little further down. I might have gone too far there. I'm not sure. All right, yeah, I went a little bit too far. So what I'm going to do now is take uh, maybe dirt one. Uh, I'm going to hit X. X will um, invert the mask, uh, which is right here, the grayscale. So bring it down to zero. And that means whatever I paint will actually be removed. And I'm also going to bring down the flow a little bit. So then instead of 100% flow, it will be 50% flow. So I can just go back and forth on this and kind of even this part out, especially down here where I think I went too far. There we go. Um, so now you notice, of course, we're seeing this pinkish. That's from the um, combination of the red and blue. So it gives that pink effect. Uh, so depending on how, you know, what works for you, whether you keep that or not. But I, I don't think blue is the color we're going to go for. What I'm really doing here is um, making the, the mask. Uh, I'm using blue because it's a very, very different color. Um, there we go. So I can also paint up here if you want to just 
paint in the in a more visual sense on exactly where you're where you're looking to put the the effect. Um, and then yeah, let me clear this up a little bit more. So this way, you know, you can really switch between white and black to get the look you want. Just I, you know, honestly, I'm not an artist myself. I just scrub back and forth. That's why I like Painter so much. Is that even though I'm not good with my hands, you can you'll never find me making a painting. Um, I can kind of you know make this work. Um, and then then we got these harsher lines here. So I'm just gonna. Uh, what I'm doing here is going command and using the mouse wheel to make this the size up and down. You can also use the slider there. Uh, so I'm just going to do that here and just to fill in these kind of harsher lines there to make sure there's no harsh lines. So it's a more natural transition between the two um, where it's solid at the top and more faded as it gets to these edges. Similar on this one. Any issues there? It looks like it's some here maybe and then I'm holding shift and right click to change the uh, to move the uh, light around which is helpful so shift and uh, left right click for that and option and command is on a Mac I don't know if it's on a PC option command to uh, move around like that and then just the mouse wheel itself will zoom in and out command will and uh, command up down will um, change the shape or the rotation and ch command left right on your mouse changes the flow. I don't use that one too often but and then option um, and click will rotate around like that so those are the buttons I use. Alright so now we've got a pretty decent mask I think but now we can actually change our HSL here and um, perhaps I'm gonna just you know maybe I, I want it to be a little different but not too different maybe a little darker bring that down so you can do that where now I've got a darker look and if I just click that off you can see the, the results. One option here is to rename this and then I can make a different one and then um, turn the first one off, turn this one on and maybe in this case I want a, a highly saturated one um, that's a different tone or something um, wherever it might be so maybe I want that look for this one and then you can turn that on and off and see the difference as well. Um, so there's a lot of detail in the skin already, um, you know, and so what you might want to do is, um, you know, uh, to change the, all the skin tone. And this is going to be something that you, you can work with over multiple maps because of course these heads are all separated from the body. So they're all different textures and you might want to have the same values over all of those. Uh, I'm going to do that with a new HSL and we're going to, um, do this. Uh, for the uh, skin, and we'll just call it skin. Actually, I did the wrong one. Let me open it and make a new folder for the skin. And um, you know, I'm just going to copy this over. Uh, option, click, and drag. We'll copy that over uh, and make sure this is passed through. And so now we can see what the skin looks like. I'm just going to uh, make this 0.5 again. And whoops, that's tab and 0.5 right there, uh, just to make it different. Now again, I don't necessarily want this affecting the, the beard and the horn spaces. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe I'm okay with the, you know, the beard's already dark. So it depends on what you want to accomplish on whether you make a mask or not. Now I could bring this down here uh, and this way when I have the um, HSL here, it actually inherits the previous changes. Um, so if the horn spot changes are really just changing shadows and some saturation, then maybe I don't want to mask them out of here at all. But perhaps I do. So let me just create a black mask. I'm just going to mask out maybe uh, maybe the lips. Maybe I'll mask the lips out just a little bit. So I'm going to make this flow down. Um, I'm going to do this probably on the UV. So change this to UV. I'm just going to bring this around here. Oops. Just to mask those out a little bit. Now when I change... Um, well actually, I should do the other way. Let me start with a white mask. Uh, and then I'm going to mask these out with a black uh, paintbrush. There you go, just a, oops, once my computer catches up, there we go. So the white mask means everything's visible, black mask means nothing's visible. Um, and then we've got a uh, different skin tone. So again, same deal here where, where really, like let's say I want to make a yellow Double, but I might just call this HSL yellow and then duplicate that, turn the first one off, 
make this one a you know purplish devil and maybe this one's gonna be less saturated um, and maybe a little darker too so now we've got purple and I'll just do that for as many as I want uh, and then let me just change this to skin HSL and horn shot HSL Oops. just so I know what those are and just to be even more clear, I'm going to call this uh, Devil Skin HSL because what we're going to do now is save this as a smart material and this will allow us to bring it over to any other um, project that has the same skin and then all these settings will be there. That way if I want the whole skin purple, which probably I do for the body and the head, um, I don't have to worry about copying the, and saving these numbers and stuff. So selecting your main HSL, and I would do this after I've chosen all the colors I want to export. I would just say create smart material here. And in a few seconds, just a little bit, it will pop up down here in the shelf. Um, okay, maybe more than a few seconds. All right, and then you got that right there. So now later, uh, if you ever need to search for it, just type in devil. And you see I've actually used this technique before. These are all um, various copies that I've done for this exact same thing. Here's devil skin, for instance. And so what we're doing is right here, devil skin HSL. So that's the one that I will drag on to other uh, graphs and as you can see, it'll have the exact same settings. Now, unfortunately, these don't update, so I can't change this and then click a button to say update uh, smart material. So um, it is best to you know try to get as, as accurate as you want as to what options you want before doing this process. It'll make it a little easier. One other thing is you can have multiple uh, projects open at once and you can copy paste. So if you do have uh, all three heads open at once in different instances of Substance Painter, you can copy this and just paste it into the other things. That should work as well. Um, the last thing I want to show you is just changing the skin all together. So again, uh, I'm just going to bring up a skin. Um, I, this might not be the best skin, but I'm just going to look for a skin and we'll go from there just to show that what you can do. Um, let's see, I've got this goblin skin here. Skin orc. Okay, let's go with the skin orc. I'm not sure what this will look like. Let's go with that. All right, I'm going to turn off uh, my HSLs. So now I'm just covering up uh, the, the devil itself. Now, there's a lot of things you can do here. A good start is just add a black mask and kind of just see what you want to, how you want to paint things in. So if you want to just, you know, um, start changing the, the the look of him just by moving around. Maybe you've got uh, something you've specifically have looked for um, or, or, or something else. It, um, but whatever look you're going for, just start painting is usually a good start. Um, for this one, you know, it's yellow. You've got this whole graph here that you can modify. I always, you know, like to create an HSL. Again, put this to pass through and add the filter. Um, and then, you know, you can change it to be something that matches more. Um, there's, there you go. So I want to make a little, add this little purplish look to it. Uh, and then whenever I, you know, paint these, I can kind of, uh, maybe go to the UV side here and just kind of add it to the ears a little bit. Um, and whatever it might be, wherever, you, you know, this makes sense to you and your project. Uh, and then once you have that, you can actually bring that down here above the t detail. The, the top is, is on top for all this stuff. And then bring up um, your HSLs again, not the horn spot, the skin, and you'll see that it inherits those changes as well. So there's a lot you can do here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest replacing the entire skin because there are all these, um, you know, unless you have the artistic skills to do so, because there are all these um, creases and stuff. The, the better option would be to make small modifications, starting with the HSL, and then going from there with, with painting some detail down there. So, um, you know, maybe the purple doesn't look right. Maybe I want to keep it um, as red, wherever red may be, right there, and just bring the lightness down a lot. So what I'm really ended up doing now is painting a more unique shade, uh, shadow. Um, you can see that difference here. So 
Um, now when I paint this, well, I'm, I'm painting shadow so I can, you know, add more to this. Um, you know, you can do a different brush here. Um, there's one with uh, dots. Yeah, so this dots one. Bring it down really small. You can kind of create stubble, right? on the devil if you want to have him look like he's got a little beard, bit of a beard going on. Um, uh, you can do other things like uh, one one fun thing if you do this fill and turn off everything but the height oops, and then bring that up just well we'll bring it up a lot for now um, and then oops black mask we want a black mask to make the difference you can pop some pimples on him here um, or little dots so now that's a little too much, and I, you know, I went for the extreme just for the visual. But then you bring it down, you know, just something like subtle like that, and now you can, you know, um, just add through this black mask just some basic little um, deformities or, or or texture to the project, to the character, whatever it might be. So um, just to add a little bit more, whatever you're looking for. So hopefully that helps. Always remember to save, and then when you export textures, you're going to want to export in the Unity 5 um, standard metallic. Now you can create your own. I've created my own um, where, uh, let's see, I'm not sure how to edit configuration. I've created my own, just maybe do a copy of this, of this setup. This one will have the albedo opacity, a normal map, a mission map, which in this case doesn't have, it doesn't have one. Um, and the big change is the metal metal AO height and rough, so that in, instead of just a metal rough, you've got the ambient occlusion and the height in the green and blue. Um, and then there's two albedos. One is albedo opacity, one is albedo height. Obviously, albedo opacity is fully opaque. Um, but in some tools I found on the asset store, the height map being in the albedo channel is used. So I've been exploring that too, just in case I need to use it. I think Shader Painter was the one that uses that. Um, so that's how you do custom mic. Uh, exporters. All right. Hope that helps. Thanks.